Uh, hello, um, I'm uh, Gonzalo Fonseca, a research fellow at INET. So in this session of INET YSI's event, Early Career Days, an introduction to the INET education uh, platform, the INET Ed. And joining us today are Peter Bent, uh, assistant professor at Trinity College, uh, Serbi Kassar, uh, a lecturer at SOAS, London, Jay Poglington, the manager of the Young Scholars Initiative, and uh, Kurt Zem, the Education Research Analyst at the Institute for New Economic Thinking. Uh, throughout this discussion, we will take a few questions from the audience. So you can submit questions at any time by uh, clicking on the uh, Q&A button uh, at any point. Um, so we talked a little bit yesterday about early careers and which a lot of you will be launched into soon um, or, or already in there. And you'll notice that you'll be spending a lot of time on teaching, which is going to be the topic today of all the sessions, essentially. Um, now, many of you, I mean, this especially applies for those who are going into academic jobs, but even those going outside academic jobs is still the task of explaining to policymakers or the general public, which is the kind of teaching that calls on similar skills. Now, these are not skills that you're normally taught. Uh, usually economics programs don't teach you how to teach. Being students, you may witness how your teachers teach, but once you get a job, it's assumed you simply know how. And they just thrust you in front of a classroom and they are told, now teach. And for a lot of young scholars, this can be daunting. You've got to figure out how to teach and supervise effectively, how to curate a course. Uh, to develop a curriculum and a syllabi, preparing lectures, setting and grading examinations. And these are all very time consuming activities, particularly when you're getting started. And if you haven't taught or, uh, or taught a particular topic before, it can be double the work. And this is happening early on in your careers while you're simultaneously being pressed to research and push out publications to say nothing else of other life pressures that you may be going through at the same time. Average day has 24 hours. You want to conscientiously do everything well, research well, teach well, and handle the rest of your life well. But oftentimes, just something has to give. And for many people in early careers, teaching often tends to be sacrificed or where people try to stay, take shortcuts. It's tempting to take the path of least resistance. Uh, mainstream textbooks like Mankiw are available. Uh, their publishers have made resources available online like problem sets and quizzes. It's easy. The textbooks are there. It saves time. And so many teachers, even those in heterodox training, just elect to teach from the textbook, pull on what they need, and focus their independent thinking time mainly on their research. So this is a natural temptation uh, of many young scholars early in, in their careers. But what I want to add to, for you to realize that this has consequences. If we, as a community, want economics to be more realistic, more creative, uh, more pluralistic, and more connected to and representative of society's concerns, then it has to be taught that way. And the way economics is currently taught goes against that. I mean, think about it for a second. Conventional economics programs are constructed linearly. So it's not like a cone, but like a line. At the beginning, your students are introduced to a very small set of basic economic models covering sort of everything. And that's sort of the first year. And then in the second year, you Revisit the same models, but with a little more technical sophistication. And then the third year, you're not exposed to new models or new topics, but you again see the same models again with some more technical detail. And this is how things go. It doesn't get more interesting. It just continues that way year after year. You never introduce to new approaches, nor alternative approaches or new topics. You just revisit the same models again and again and again in ever more technical detail. 
Well, this has two consequences um, for the profession. The first is a narrowing of thought. Think about the message that this sort of uh, teaching uh, sends to students. It's telling students that economic theory is a settled topic. There is the set of models and that's that. There's nothing more to debate. All that remains is application. That's consequence number one. Consequence number two is a narrowing of students. It alienates, this style of teaching alienates students who are more critically minded, who are less willing to sort of to accept things as given. It also discourages students who are not particularly technically inclined or who enrolled in an economics class because they were interested in, in, in the economy and social ideas, and yet they're really not seeing that. This is not what they signed up for. And so these particular types of students may decide not to pursue economics education further. While the students that do remain are told to limit their curiosity and focus on honing their technical skills rather than you know, expanding and exploring new ideas. So the way a con conventional economics is thought has a narrowing effect. It reduces the diversity of students and reduces the diversity of thinking. In short, conventional education tends to produce narrow-minded academic professionals in the end. So it's unsurprising if we end up with a profession with little or no imagination of how to address real challenges. INET has launched its education initiative. We believe economics education can be reformed to counter these narrowing, uh, these narrowing effects. And you specifically as young teachers have a responsibility towards the next generation. Through your teaching, you can show them that one, economics is not a settled topic, that it's more open-ended and there's room for debate. Two, you can show them that economics is a topic, it's not a technique. It is a social science, it's not a branch of applied mathematics. And the ideas, ideas, economic ideas can come from all sorts of approaches. And three, that there is no trade-off between depth and breadth that you can go explore new ideas and that will produce better ideas. So by countering this narrowing effect, you can encourage both diversity of students to remain in economics programs and stimulate current students to think more critically and engage in newer economic thinking. So you need to remember as a teacher that you are an agent of change, not merely through your research or through your advice to the halls of power, but also in the academy, through your teaching, you have a role, a role, an ability to change uh, economics education and create a more diverse set of future economists and future citizens. So you need to pay attention to your teaching. Don't overlook it. Don't think of it as an afterthought. Of course, this is easier said than done, and there are many obstacles in the way. Time, life, institutions, resources. And so what we're going to be covering today is we're we'll talking a lot about these obstacles um, and discuss strategies about how to overcome them. But one strategy I do want to emphasize is that we must rely on each other. Uh, and this is why one reason, uh, the main reason why we created the INET Ed platform. Now, the INET Ed platform is an online platform which has both a content uh, um, uh, element and a discussion element. Although teachers have mandates to teach certain courses, they also have flexibility, some have flexibility in what they can teach inside those courses. Teachers may want to design alternative courses or just introduce alternative topics and approaches as a supplement in their conventional courses, but they may not necessarily know how to teach them. Even those who know the topic may not have experience in teaching it, and those who are unfamiliar are simply at a loss of where to begin. How do I design a course in Marx and political economy? How do I introduce feminist approaches? How do I insert Minsky into a macroeconomic course? These are things you may want to do, but may not necessarily know how to do. And this is why, why I say we need to rely on each other, because there are people who have designed Marx and uh, political economy courses. There are people who have designed feminist economic courses. There are people who can show you how to put Minsky in the macroeconomics course. 
teachers are busy people and many don't have time to go research things from the start. And again, it will be leads to the temptation of taking the path of least resistance and just forget about introducing alternative methods and just go on back to the textbook. So this is the knot that the INET Ed platform wants to cut. We wanna make it easier for teachers like you by providing you with simple and re ready teaching material on alternative topics and approaches. So things like explainers, lecture notes, quiz questions, um, syllabi, things you can, you, uh, you as teachers can easily access, understand and incorporate into, into courses without too much investment of time. But there's also the community element, the discussion forum uh, on the site, where you can turn to the other community of other teachers. Teachers are already taught such material and have ideas how to teach them and ask them directly and discuss, hey, this is something I've done. Um, here, let me share it with you. Or how do I do this? Does anybody have any idea? So the reason for the INET Ed platform is precisely that. We are, in a sense, in, in the same way that uh, the big publishers have these online resources, alternative approaches should have their also center, center point of online resources that teachers can draw upon to design their courses, to provide materials to each other, share materials with each other, and share advice on how to design courses for each other. So the internet is a scattered and anarchic place where there's a lot of material out there. There are teachers who have developed, you know, ways of teaching, senior teachers who know how to, who have already experience with designing courses, new teachers that are still trying to find out. We wanna bring them together and share their experiences and share their materials and share the discussions and build a community to teach and bring uh, the teaching of alternative topics into economics uh, courses uh, and start making the change that we hope can happen. Um, I went off a little briefer than I'd hoped to be, but I wanna give time to also to talk, uh, uh, to pass it over now to Serbi uh, Kisar. Thank you, Gonzalo. Um, that I uh, that was very exciting and actually made me reflect a lot on about my own teaching process. So let me just say that um, as uh, I'm Surbi Geser and um, I'm a lecturer in development economics at the Department of Economics at SOAS. Um, I'm a co-project lead on the INET Education platform. And based on my own self-reflection, I just want to say that it is. It, academic environment has become extremely competitive and something that none of us is unaware of, especially young academics going into this project. So it is very possible that the time and space which is devoted to thinking about teaching as both an intellectual as well as a political endeavor gets heavily constricted. This is particularly a problem now when we need to train a new generation of students who can critically engage in questions of new economic thinking because uh, at no time than now does the world need critical thinkers more, I believe. So this platform is kind of uh, trying to bridge that sort of a gap where it's trying to recenter teaching and particularly those engaged in teaching from pluralist perspectives as a central focus of academia, which should already have been the case. Over the last few months, we've thought about what kind of content can be featured on the platform, how to create a platform that ignites conversations on teachings, including uh, that those on course curations, pedagogical practices for more inclusive learning, as well as institutional challenges. In my own very brief career as an academic, I think I've curated about five courses on political economy, economics of identity, some courses on Indian economy, on communicating economics, global economic policy, both in India and the UK. And this curation while time taking, I believe has been one of the most exciting part of my academic experience so far. The idea that what you're putting out there is shaping individuals, it's it's talking to young minds about how to question, how to critique, how to speak truth to power based on a rigorous critical analysis. It's a very, very satisfying endeavor. 
there's some satisfaction that we achieve by talking, you know, by putting a work out there. But this is something which is very immediate. And I feel as a teacher at the end of the academic year, when you've done a full course, when you've had people engage with you, it is probably one of the highlight of why many of us wanted to be academics, but that part has increasingly become lost in this entire conversation. The most exciting part was also a discussion with my colleagues, students and friends about how to redo the course, how to run it in the next iteration, what things are going well and what things aren't. What are the different kind of pedagogical practices that can be introduced in order to make the course more exciting? The idea with the INET platform is something very similar, that how do young and senior academics, how can they both engage with these very important conversations in terms of various aspects of teaching, but not just that, but also partake in defining the contours of how teaching needs to be thought of. So it is a re-engagement with the philosophy of teaching that we all believe is very central to academia. And if it has not been so far, it needs to be re-centered, particularly given the crisis of the current moment. Thank you. May I please pass it on to my colleague, Peter, who I've really enjoyed working with this on this project. Thanks. Thank, I've learned a lot from you, Serbian and, and Gonzalo. That was a perfect introduction, so I don't want to repeat any of it. Thank you both very much, and I just want to build on that. Um, Serbia, what you are just saying that really hit home, I mean, these are some of these, this focus on teaching is some of the most rewarding and satisfying aspects of this this job, but um, just connecting that back with what Gonzalo was saying, unfortunately, the incentive structure is such that it is, you know, when Gonzalo is describing how teaching can fall by the wayside, that's not through malice or through anybody's, you know, denigrating of teaching. It's just that we don't individually have the power to alter that incentive structure structure to make teaching feature more prominently in our you know, day to day activities with what we're rewarded for doing um, along this career path. And so, you know, it's that time of the semester right now where I'm just super distracted by a million different things. And sometimes I have been pausing and thinking that even if I was just teaching one class, not doing any research, not attending any meetings, there still wouldn't be enough hours in the day to, you know, be completely satisfied with what I'm doing for that one class in terms of thinking of new ways to engage students, bringing in new materials, keeping up with what other people are writing and then integrating that into the class. There just isn't enough time. And adding all those other aspects of this reality, so the actual research, you know, teaching multiple classes, all the administrative duties into this schedule, there's, there's nowhere near enough time. And so for me, the most exciting, successful, useful part of this INET Ed platform is that it offers us that centralized location to engage in these conversations and to share resources. Because right now, you know, even with courses that I've been teaching for a while, I still spend a lot of time, you know, kind of haphazardly searching the internet for the kinds of resources that will be made available or that are currently being made available through the INET Ed platform. I'm Googling to see if I can find any syllabi from other people who are teaching the same textbook and then looking at you know, alternative ways of approaching the same models as other people, but you know, trying to bring in you know, different critical ways of looking at it. And then you know, once in a while, I'm able to actually talk to somebody in person who's using the same textbook, has been thinking about these problems for a long time. And then I can say, all right, well, I have one question for you about this one specific aspect of this model, um, you know, how do you teach this one part to students? But there's no, again, centralized way for me to engage in that conversation. That's why I'm so excited about this platform, because we'll be able to share materials to use in our teaching directly with this community, this broader community of teachers of economics. And then also with the messaging feature and the discussion board, be able to you know, put questions out there to a targeted group, very different from just throwing it out onto Twitter, but with this targeted group of teachers of economics to be able to say, hey, has anybody used this textbook in this class? You know, what order did you 
go through the chapters and something like that and then get higher quality feedback, have a higher quality conversation. So there's nothing like it. I know that we need it. We've needed it for a long time. And I am I'm very, very happy about this. So in order for it to really work, we all need to to use it and to you know be some of the first adopters and feel comfortable putting our material up there and starting discussions and to make it a you know weekly habit, whatever, to keep checking back in and, and engaging in these conversations. So I hope everybody finds it to be useful. I, I certainly already have. And um, yeah, please, please engage, please participate, because the more of us who are doing it, the more actively, the better it'll be. Thank you. Well, thank you, Peter. Thank you, Serbi. Thank you, Gonzalo. Um, so my role is to sort of tie it back to the YSI community, which is hosting the YSI Early Career Days. And I would like to also, from my perspective, uh, briefly explain my motivation uh, for why I think this ed platform is essential. Um, for all the reasons that Gonzalo mentioned to support teachers in this critical phase or any teacher that is interested in provi being provided uh, a better support structure because as the theme of this uh, these early career days has been is that many of the concerns that we about the how we should conduct ourselves the, about how we go about uh, with particular challenges that we're faced with in our everyday is this pertains as Gonzalo says very much to teaching as well as long as, as much to all the other issues we opened up yesterday teaching is a central one that uh, we all will have to engage in if we stay on an academic uh, path. And as Gonzalo said, this comes at a time where a tremendous amount of other responsibilities and pressures are also mounting on us. So we understand from YSI, a lot of us who are not so young scholars anymore are now in this, in this space. Um, and I would like to sort of also just reiterate several things here that stand out to me, which is the following. Uh, Peter Serbi and Gonzalez said that there are many resources out there. There's the internet is full of potential ways of doing things. But the real critical thing is how do you bring it closer to our actual concerns? How do we actually um, make it so we can actually use it day to day or have access to somebody else that actually immediately understands what we're talking about um, without us having to explain ourselves um, to in the, having to overcome a barrier? of that nature. So the key here is the same thing that we experienced yesterday in the early career days on our first day, uh, but also it was a theme in YSI in general, is that we generate in this platform amongst teachers an intimacy, a general cooperative mode in which we are willing and able to share these resources with each other. Um, and this is also uh, very important because it's not just the what, but also the how. Other questions that you cannot get ready answers anywhere else uh, about, I'm moving from one one institution to another. I'm like, Serbi just moved to the United Kingdom. She has a lot of new questions. Uh, what What is it like? To, what is the course structure like inside that particular institution? Where would you turn for questions like that? You might have friends, but others, it's again, uh, we should not limit these conversations to personal networks. This has to, through uh, the same YSI logic in which we're trying to extend to the Anet Ed platform, a, a public good that is uh, built and, uh, and, and, and driven by uh, a community that really wants to pull together and sees a collective good that we all want to contribute to. And that is my, that's really my hope that we can, we, we can uh, build this particular community on teaching that is an extension of YSI, and which is also why we're introducing this uh, to uh, all of the YSI members attending today and those of you are listening on the recording later. The key is that we stay together on this big mission, this big vision of really having an open, better, more rewarding, more intellectually stimulating environment in economics, of which teaching is a centerpiece. And uh, we all have gone through it. We all know what a good course, a good teacher looks like. And we all strive to have that experience as well. Um, and how do you improve yourself uh, on that front is a critical question we all ask ourselves. And uh, honestly, 
we have so many good minds that could play a, a role here. We all need to invest a little bit for us to get a lot out of it. So that's uh, the hope today, to introduce this platform to you, to introduce the same YSI intimacy, cooperative nature uh, to this platform that we're hoping to bring here. We're very concerned, of course, that teachers are time uh, very limited in their time. So you can also rely on this team that's here today and, and those who are working on the project further to take your suggestions and your, your ideas and run with them, even if you don't have time yourself to fulfill uh, or uh, uh, lead any project within the platform. We're just uh, trying to also go with where your needs are, your concerns are, and much like the what Nicolas presented in the earlier career research report yesterday, this should be seen as a start of a conversation. We are not ready and done with the, all the answers, ready for everybody to to uh, just follow some script. Uh, what really has to happen is that we uh, make and create this environment for ourselves, and that we listen and support each other in our individual challenges. Uh, to overcome the big collective challenge of improving the state of economics. So that's my couple words. Um, and I would like to sort of spend the next last minute or so uh, handing over back to Gonzalo, since I don't see any questions in the audience. But we are going to be here throughout these days to go into the particular problems of teaching. And Gonzalo can tell us what's going to happen over these next uh, couple hours. Hi. Uh, so. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I just want to reiterate everything that uh, in agreement to everything with Serbi, with, which Serbia and Peter and, and Jay spoke about. Um, ultimately, this does fall on ourselves, fall on ourselves relying on each other uh, to uh, improve, in a sense, what our, our craft is, which is an important part of our craft, important, important part of, of our jobs. Um, but, but keep in mind, of course, it is, it is about, of course, Changing the way economics works, but it's also again to re-emphasize it's also about improving teaching, teaching in and of itself. Small things that you may not think of, like you know, what do you do on your first day of class? Uh, what do you? Uh, uh, how do how do I, I design a course? How do I? Now, over the course of the day, we're going to have people uh, several speakers. Um, the next, I believe, is going to be uh, Jay Hati Ghosh and uh, David Ruccio. Um, who will be speaking about how they design uh, uh, alternative courses, how they curate a course, uh, which hopefully will be informative for you. Later on, we'll have uh, Yuris and, and Sam talking about the designing of a, of, 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 a, of, of a curriculum uh, in using different combinations that can be more appealing and more pluralistic than the, the current uh, structure is. Uh, we'll have um, uh, Boffinger talking about Thank you, the textbook and 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 the dismal parts of it, um, as well as later on. Very briefly, I'll show you physically just a little bit of the orientation of, of the platform itself, uh, uh, just in case you haven't seen it yet. Um, and essentially, I think I'll, let me give it back to you, Jay. Yeah, one more thing in the program that's very important is we're act actually going to have a series of workshops with YSI alumni. But that's all we need to say for now, because we are now about to head over to uh, the next session with David and Jayadi, and we're all very, very excited for that. So thanks very much, everybody, for being here. Uh, this is really great that uh, we're all showing up to learn about teaching and the course creation is the next topic of the next session. So see you all there.